Welcome to another edition of Bugosity. We're going to continue debunking the things that will turn your brain into mulch. Today, we're going to look at one of the most ridiculous conspiracy theories ever. The moon landing hoax. In July of 1969, history was made. Mankind, for the first time, set foot on another world. It was a monumental achievement on many levels. We had sent people to the moon and returned them safely. We gained a lot of scientific knowledge. But perhaps most incredibly of all, our government actually did something right! Zing! But as most of us look back at this as one of the coolest things ever, there are people out there wanting to harsh what is perhaps mankind's greatest mellow. In his video, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, Bart Sebrel hopes to convince you that it was all a fake. High above the Earth, beginning at an altitude of 1,000 miles, lay lethal bands of radiation called the Van Allen Radiation Belts. In order to survive the hour and a half journey through this radiation field, solid lead shielding between the astronauts and the exposure outside would be required. To add additional tonnage in the form of a lead barrier would have made it impossible for the vehicle to get off the ground. That voice. Is that the lady from The Weakest Link? Hey, can I vote off Bart Sebrel, please? Okay, here's the skinny. The Van Allen belt is real, but it's pretty easy to get through it safely. The astronauts just skimmed the outer edge of the belt, where the radiation is lowest. Even without the lead shielding the wacky video claims, the astronauts only got about two rems of radiation, less than a standard chest x-ray. They're also lying when they say only Apollo went through the belt. Gemini 2 did as well, and the International Space Station travels through the lowest part of it several times a day. That's the only thing vaguely science-related in the whole video. The rest is just a collection of easily debunked claims. Prepare for some rapid-fire bogosity! And what of the photographs? On three separate occasions, our office asked NASA's Public Relations Department for every single picture of an astronaut on the surface of the moon, just during the maiden voyage of Apollo 11. In all, fewer than 20 pictures were found, also surprising is the scarcity of photographs of the mission's chief pioneer, Neil Armstrong. There is only one full-body picture of him on the moon, besides this ghostly reflection. This one, taken by an automatic camera mounted on the side of the lunar module. Perhaps he feared liability, should the whole conundrum later become unraveled. Or perhaps the camera was fixed to his spacesuit. It's kind of hard to take a picture of yourself with a camera attached to your chest. Gee, you think? These guys weren't tourists. They weren't that concerned with taking pictures of themselves. They were scientists working on a mission. In any case, it's all a lie. There were several pictures taken of Armstrong by the LN camera. Here's 12 of them with Armstrong. And they claimed only 20 were taken all total. When objects are lit solely by the sun, then all shadows will run parallel with one another and never intersect. These shadows, which are cast at different angles, are evidence that a second light source is being used. How bogus can you get? If there were two lights, you'd either see a bright area where they overlap or a dark area between them if they don't. Otherwise, if you light the entire scene with two lights, then every object should cast two shadows. Is this the best these nutcases can do? The reason the shadows appear to be non-parallel is because of perspective. They're receding into the distance. Like train tracks, they're parallel, but they appear to converge on the horizon. Other examples are due to the fact that the terrain on the moon is uneven. Look at this one. It appears to change directions at the bottom of the mound. Had aerial pictures been taken, they certainly would have been seen to be parallel. In addition, the sun would not cause an isolated hot spot like this. Yes, it would. This is called the opposition effect, where you have the reflection of the light source itself back into the camera. It happens when the sun is low in the sky, as it was during the moon landings, and the camera is exactly between the sun and what you're taking a picture of. Moon dust is very reflective, and seeing this hot spot is exactly what any photographer would expect. 
here, the shadows are shown to be as black as pitch. And yet here, completely in a shadow, the astronaut is lit up like a Christmas tree. Hardly like a Christmas tree, he's pretty dark. Notice that the pitch black shadows are shadows cast on the moon's surface, whereas other objects in shadow, such as a spacesuit, appear lit. This is because of light reflecting off the moon's surface. When a photographer wants to fill in a shadow, one way is to simply hold up a white board and let the sun reflect off of that and onto the shaded areas of the subject. The moon's surface played this role here. But since it's logically impossible for the moon's surface to reflect light onto itself, those shadows stay black. Oh, and by the way, this is a picture of Neil Armstrong. You know, one of the ones they claimed didn't exist. In this magnification of an Apollo photograph, a rock, very likely a paper mache prop because of the crease here, is categorized with the letter C. In later releases of the same picture, the letter is gone. It's not the later releases of the picture that lack the C, it's the original. The C just was not there originally. It's the result of a tiny piece of hair or fiber getting onto the plate when the photo was duplicated. Oh, and that little crease isn't a crease at all. It's obviously the continuation of this shadow at the bottom. This whole Sea Rock issue is an example of the desperate lengths the Moon Hoax nutcases will go to in order to cling on to a completely stupid point like this. Because you see, they found another sea right beside the rock. And this one is even there on the original. Only it's not a sea either. It's a shadow of that small bump of rock. The idea is this sea is letting the production crew know where to place the prop. But there's a problem. This is hardly the only sea in the picture. Look over here by the tripod. Here's one. And way over down here by this rock, there's another. And another. And another. Gee, with all these seas around, how did they know which one to place the sea rock by? They'll also tell you that the sea on the rock is exactly the same as the one on the ground. But it just isn't. Look closely. Clearly they're quite different. Actually, the presence of the sea has been tracked down to a single print made by the Lunar and Planetary Institute in Houston. All of the copies that have the sea rock can be traced back to this one print. None of the rest of them have it. The sea just was not there originally. This is not a prop. Get over it. Here, a crosshair appears behind the object in this scene clearly revealing a composite of two pictures into one. No, it's clearly showing your ignorance of photography, which is becoming more and more obvious. The reason why the crosshair is hidden is because on film, bright objects tend to bleed a bit, and in this case the bleed is enough to cover the thin crosshair. Look closely at a high-resolution version of the picture. You can see the bleed for yourself. The object isn't bright enough to completely obscure the crosshair, but it is bright enough to bleed over most of it. Yet there's still a tiny hint of the original crosshair left. Gee, Sebrel didn't look very closely at these pictures, did he? 